Hello again, welcome to our reading and focus writing for newspaper reports, lesson two on Thursday the 7th of May 2020. Um, so let's head it up reading first of all. Um, put your name at the top and I'll just draw your attention as I always do to the reading corner on Edge Studio for uh, epic reading activities which is the website, this PowerPoint very quickly shows you how to get onto it if you haven't done it yet. 20 minutes a day, just write down what you're reading and send it as, an, and a, as a journal and you'll get extra stars for it. So today is the 7th and if we have a look at the activity for today, it's actually Teacher's Day. And say thank you to your teacher on Teacher's Day, which you don't have to worry about saying thank you. I'd prefer it if you got on and actually read something for 20 minutes and let me know. That would make me happy. Okay, um, so for week three, our reading activity was based on the letter to the editor. And I'm not going to go through and read that again. Now, what I would like to do today is do Thursday and Friday's activity. So today is a writing activity and Friday's is a language activity. And then it's done and we can get on and do some other things. So head that up, week three, Thursday the 7th. Um, and we're doing reading. So our first one is a writing task in the reading box, but anyway, in this letter, which was written by Sam James and talked about why he objected to zoos and why he thought they were not very humane and why kids shouldn't go there on an excursion, which I can totally relate to. And in this letter, the author expresses their strong opinion that people should not visit zoos. Write a letter to the editor that expresses the opinion that people should visit zoos. Structure your letter using an introduction, a series of arguments and a conclusion. Be sure to include persuasive devices such as high modality. Now we know modality, it means you definitely should do this or you mustn't do that. It's you telling somebody how likely or unlikely it is that you're going to do something or that they should do something. And they use it a lot in advertising and in newspaper reporting. Motive language, using your emotions, saying why you really don't like something, why you find something disgusting or abhorrent, which means horrible. Okay, and rhetorical questions, which we know we've done all of these in term one. Uh, rhetorical question is where you ask a question to get someone thinking, but you're not really expecting an answer. And rhetorical questions are very interesting to use, aren't they? And that was a rhetorical question. Pretty sneaky, hey? Okay, so if you can go through, head it up Thursday, um, and just write a letter to the editor. You, If you're not sure how to format it, copy this one. Um, obviously pop the date in as well. And you'll remember your writing to express your strong opinion that people should not visit zoos. Now, the main thing is not to write a really long letter. The main idea is to be persuasive and give some really good reasons why they shouldn't. And then Friday's language task, make sure you head this up, Friday language task, is a persuasive text Use emotive language to convince the reader to agree with the author's point of view. Some emotive language used in this letter include cruel, unfair and thoughtless. And we could go through and highlight that and find those words. Find at least five more examples of emotive language used in the text. Then think of five more emotive words the author could have used in the letter. So this one's a really easy one to do, which is why we're doing it together. So go through, find those words, then find five more. Um, freely, that's an emotive language just as an example and then you're going to think of another one that you could use instead of free, freely. Okay, maybe you can google these words, you can look them up in a dictionary and that's our reading for today. Now with our focus writing task we finished that yesterday. Uh, there it is there. We're really getting through those lessons quite quickly, which is great because when we go back, we're going to be doing our assessment on that. Yep, so we've done all of that. And if you haven't done it, I'd prefer you just focus on this. Even if you go back and watch the lesson from Tuesday and Wednesday and get that done and watch the videos. If you have done it, I have another little activity for you to do, which I have sent through. Um, via dojo and email you can either pull it up and look at it or you can print it out so this is this is a really good activity because it really uses your brain so what it's called it's called a reverse 
comprehension newspaper. So it is as though a reporter has gone out to the scene and they have written notes about it and you then have given it to you and you have to write the actual news article. So they've gone Stanley the Seagull, that's the topic. That is not your heading. You can head it up however you want. What you're doing is you're looking at this information here, you're pulling it all together and you're structuring it, as you know, as a newspaper article. Okay, so you're doing your headline, your summary or your lead, your who, what, where, why, is, make it really catchy, the body with the detail and the tail of it. So you follow the structure of the news article. Okay, so we know it's a newspaper report because they've ticked it. So this is something you get a hard copy newspaper, you open it up and you see it in it. Then the author who wrote this, they've put in there Jenny Jernaby which is a bit of a play on words for journalism, and Stanley the Seagull stolen from the Swineberry Shops or Swinberry Shops. So that could even be your heading if you want to. Then the events that have happened, they've written them down in a box and then they've numbered them in the order that they think that they've happened. So in the body, you're going to write those in order. So I'm not going to read those to you. Um, then it has some captions down here. Mr Jolly was devastated when he was un unable to find the cuddly mascot on Wednesday morning. So there's some more details. That's why he was an important seagull, because he was a mascot. Up here, don't forget this is a reverse comprehension, so the answers have been given to you. When the shopping centre was being built, the builders gave food to a friendly seagull every day and named it Stanley. When the shopping centre was officially open, Mr Jolly decided to create a toy mascot to represent the bird. So are we talking about a real seagull or are we talking about a toy or a statue that was there? So go through, read it, and basically can you use the information in this, these comprehension questions and answer to write the original newspaper report? So that's your activity for today. And if you can do that, if you can take the time to sit down and do that and think this through, you really understand newspaper reports. So have a go, send it to me, and I'm very interested to see how you go. Of course, if you haven't finished everything on Ed Studio, please sit down and do that. You really need to do it. But that's our lesson today, seven minutes and 40 seconds. Um, good luck with that, and I'll see you in lesson three.